The eye is broken down into three layers, the choroid, sclera, and retina. Sclera is the outer white layer that maintains the shape of the eye. Muscles attached to the sclera control eye movements. Choroid is the middle layer that controls blood vessels. The cornea is a clear circular area within the sclera where light enters the eye. The pupil is the circular opening in the front of the choroid. And the iris is the colored smooth muscle surrounding the pupil, which adjusts the size of the opening according to the brightness of light. The lens is located behind the pupil, between the anterior and posterior chambers. The lens is a transparent, flexible, biconvex structure that bends or refracts light rays so that they can focus on the nerve cells of the retina. The chambers are filled with a watery fluid that help reflect light rays as well as give shape to the eye. The anterior fluid is called the aqueous humor. The posterior fluid is called the vitreous humor. The retina is the inner layer that contains the nerve cells, bipolar cells, as well as the rods and cones. Rods are sensitive to light but do not sense color. Cones sense color. The highest concentration of cones is in the fovea centralis. Rods synapse with bipolar cells, which in turn synapse with ganglio cells, whose axons form the optic nerve. How the rods respond to light is similar to how the cones respond to light. Understanding how one works can give you a better idea of how the other works. So inside the rods we have three main components. Rotospin is the visual pigment found within the rods. Rotospin is made up of the protein opsin and retinol which is in its cis conformation. Retinol is a slightly processed version of vitamin A, which explains part of the reason why vitamin A helps with vision. Transducin is a trimeric molecule, which means that it is composed of three monomer parts. This protein has GDP bound to one of the alpha subunits. Phosphodiesterase is an enzyme that breaks a phosphodiester bond. In this case, it will convert cyclic GMP to GMP. However, the enzyme cannot do what it is intended to do until its two alpha subunits are removed. So in order to begin this process, a photon of light must enter through the lens of the eye to hit rhodopsin. In turn, the cis retinol is converted into its trans conformation. Once this happens, trans retinol begins to lose its attraction to opsin and eventually leaves the opsin molecule entirely. This in turn leaves a vacant binding site on the opsin. The opsin can now maneuver closer to a transducin molecule where its binding site can cataclyze a reaction that donates a phosphate group to the GDP of transducin, making it GTP. Once GTP is formed, that particular subunit of transducin is now activated and can leave behind its neighboring subunits. Once GTP has successfully departed from transducin, it will seek to bind with one of the alpha subunits of phosphodiesterase. GTP can then successfully remove the entire alpha subunit of the phosphodiesterase molecule. This entire process will have to happen again to remove the remaining alpha subunit from phosphodiesterase. Once you have phosphodiesterase by itself, it can now do its job, which is to convert cyclic GMP to GMP. This is the step that leads to vision. If we were to take a look at an example of a rod in the dark, there would be cyclic GMT floating around with cyclic GMP gated sodium channels amongst the membrane of the rod. Similar to sodium potassium pumps of a given cell, the cyclic GMP will stimulate the cyclic GMP gated channels which in turn will allow sodium ions to enter the rod. If we were to take a look at an example of a rod in the dark, there would be cyclic GMT floating around with cyclic GMP gated sodium channels amongst the membrane of the rod. Similar to sodium potassium pumps of a given cell, the cyclic GMP will stimulate the cyclic GMP gated channels, which in turn will allow sodium ions to enter the rod. Neurotransmitters are then released. Once the phosphodiesterase molecule is activated, 
and gets rid of the cyclic GMP, making it just GMP. The cyclic GMP gated channels will close and the neurotransmitters will stop being released. This image of the brain, observed from overhead, demonstrates how the image which reaches the retina is coded and transmitted to the visual cortex. Light falling on the retina stimulates the fibers of the optic nerve. These fibers join to form a cross called the optic chiasma. The optic chiasma is where fibers from the inner side of each eye pass to the visual cortex on the opposite side. Fibers from the outer field of each eye are uncrossed passing to the visual cortex on the same side. From the optic chiasma, information passes via the optic tracts to the lateral geniculate bodies. The geniculate bodies is where perception of death occurs. This information can then be passed on to the optic radiation, which transmits the information to the primary visual cortex, situated in the occipital lobes. The primary visual cortex is responsible for the perception of the position of objects in space and the relationship to each other as well as the perception of light and shade. To wrap things up, light rays enter the eye through the cornea, pupil, and lens, where the light rays are bent or refracted to focus them on the rods and cones, which transmit the stimulus via the optic nerve to the occipital lobe of the brain for interpretation.